Greetings all, the Baglava, once again. Uh, hello, I am Uncle Bill. See? And to my right is Carter Dardinchen. Yes, for the films of Joe DiMato. Oh, God. we got a big pot. We got a big pot <laughs> of bullshit. This <laughs> is brewing right here. <laughs> Put some guy. Parmesan cheese on some bullshit. This guy... Ah, uh, you know, we've been through... Uh, I, I've been through a couple of different directors now. You know, Bruno Mattei, who is a genius. I think we can all yeah. agree. And Lamberto Bava, who in a different way was kind of a genius. I don't think Joe D'Amato's a genius. No. I'm not sure what Joe D'Amato is doing, <laughs> except I know. I don't think Joe D'Amato knows what Joe D'Amato is doing. <laughs> I know that Joe D'Amato uh, made one of the worst shark films of all time. And we're going to be talking about that. Worst. Made one of the worst bird movies of all time. Worst animal film. He just yeah. was not. He was not good. No. But it, the the pacing of these movies is a sight to behold because they all have pretty much the same pacing, and it really only kind of works in one of these movies. Um, yeah. But the rest of the time, it's just it's it's people like a ragtag group of characters like you know imagine all the parts of scooby-doo where the characters are wandering around it only is like five to ten seconds it's stretch it out to 45 minutes in like the second act of every movie and you got joe damato's signature style that's exactly it like i i feel like the majority of that was just because like he didn't have any money for like effects or really anything else so he's just like we're just gonna like have these people wander around <laughs> aimlessly in these some of the locations i think like he just he went to certain locations so he could like film something that looked kind of cool and he would just have people wander around that way too long just getting shots of like these you know caverns and castles and things like that but there's really no substance <laughs> other than they're he's, just walking around in it he's like uh he's like terrence malick he just gets lost in the art of the shots <laughs> and he forgets the story yeah that's exactly uh, who i was thinking uh, of when i was thinking this one. <laughs> joe damato uh, and terrence yeah. malick yeah but anyway, uh, <laughs> there's there's quite a few because I will say though that I mean he goes through different periods in his career, mm -hmm. kind of like you know many of the the other great directors. He's got his 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 I don't know what you call it dark period where it's all like fucking just gore and murder and mayhem and you know necrophilia and just the mm -hmm. craziest shit ever then he switches and he goes into porno for a while and he stayed in porno for a good long time and you know kind of lightens it up with a shark movie yeah, so you know yeah and, you know i didn't realize that until you just said it too because if we're going i'd say what deep deep blood's the last chronologically right when it came yeah out. so if we're starting yeah. You're gonna see like this weird. You're starting with like Beyond the Darkness, and you're eating, ending with Deep Blood, which is in tone just two wildly different. Like you have one that's like a super dark, mean spirited, kind of nasty movie, and then you yes. have another movie that's just boring as fuck, and it's kind of like a, a, a wannabe teeny bopper movie. You know, at certain what? Points. It's just wild to me. The one part about him that I noticed in those first three movies is just how mean-spirited those movies are like yes. every one of those first three movies is like the kills in it go on like way too long they're way too graphic like and there's just there's something about them where you're kind of like you're just turned off by it like i don't yeah. i don't know even fulci would say he went too far yeah i mean i really feel like yeah 
especially there's a scene in the grim reaper where i was like that's <laughs> they're not gonna do that and then they fucking do that and i'm like yeah yeah fulci what? didn't even think about that no <laughs> it's like, not even close he's like what the fuck is this no no we done no, we okay. don't do that yeah. oh my god yeah that when that scene happened we'll get to but when that scene yeah. happened i was like i was like fuck yeah might as well <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i mean if you're gonna make How a movie like that yeah yeah yeah. yeah, might as well like have a payoff like that. Okay, so real quick, checking in on who's in here. Uh, Dirk, it's good to see you again, man. The 4K tent revival's in here. Witch Hunter's in here. Texas is in here. Ken Carlson's in here. Uh, the mayor's in here. Wes is in here. There's a whole bunch of people in here. And I guess like we can go ahead and get started. I've been doing this kind of like a little bit differently in terms of I've just been like uh, typing the film into the chat so I could have like a reference point for what we're doing if that makes any sense so like people can kind of yeah. keep track i have a little pdf of some footnotes i took for each one um so i gotta have it on air it's just a reminder because if i didn't take any notes that most of these movies i'd probably just immediately forget about after they were over that's fucking true man especially yeah. these first well with the exception of the grim I, reaper the, <laughs> like, there's certain parts yeah. of that you don't forget but yeah right you're right yeah i'd say i'd say beyond the darkness has some moments too where it's like yeah i just i because i knew nothing about the movie aside from the uh still uh that's on tubi because i've passed by it a few times i'm like well that looks interesting that's yep. the, the the acid bath so i went in totally blind and uh th there's some things if you have not seen this movie and you go in totally blind like i did which i guess we're going to spoil those parts but there's certain yeah. things in this where you're just like did i hear that right am i seeing this right is there, this really so happening i'm just gonna tell everybody right now like we're gonna spoil these movies but they're yeah. not this is not like we're spoiling you know the usual suspects or anything like no. i feel like that there's no real mysteries or anything in any of these movies they're just a lot of slashers and like you know i don't know zombie we say like, like they're not there's nothing to the end of them so uh, i wouldn't yeah. worry about that no there's there's if there's a mystery, it's telegraphed 45 minutes in advance. Of yeah. Happened, you know? <laughs> it's not, I don't think he made Jalos. I wouldn't call any no. of these films Jalos <laughs> at all. Like, not even close. No. But Beyond the Darkness, um, yeah. to me, this is kind of like, this is the beginning of anything that would come like those necromantic movies and stuff like that mm -hmm. later on. Like yeah. anything like that that you can think of, that whole subgenre of like dude like keeps around a corpse and kind of makes out with it later while he's also going slowly insane. Like any film you can think of like that, I'm pretty sure was influenced by this film. <laughs> was, that was uh, my favorite. That was that genre was my favorite section of Blockbuster back in the day. Dude that makes <laughs> out with corpses. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Dude that keeps around uh yeah. corpse girlfriends <laughs> makes out with them while slowly going insane. Yeah. It's a long placard, but I feel like, yeah. So, yeah, um, I guess we could start with this one. Um, I'd say of all of them, I, I definitely liked probably this one the most, if you want me to be honest with you. Um, me too, oddly. <laughs> we, because I feel like we should say this. We're good people. Before yeah. we say that we like oh, yeah. this, this movie, I just want you to know that we are good people. Yeah, I've donated to charity. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, we don't. We, condone this behavior but like, we don't condone all this fake stuff that's happening and take yeah. it seriously at all yeah. yeah but this is an interesting movie to be like a big fan of <laughs> yeah I, I wouldn't even this is one of those things i would even suggest to somebody be like yeah, you want to see something good because they'd, they'd probably look at you like funny after they watch this because the plot i mean i guess you can get into the the, the bear yeah the plot. the the bear essentials of the plot is um you got cinzio Moriale, i think is how you pronounce her name who was emily in uh the beyond probably one of the hottest italian women to ever come from that time period by the way she mm -hmm. passes away at the beginning of the, the very beginning of the film by the way like the first five minutes she dies and it's because of this housekeeper that this guy has who has like put a voodoo curse on her and because she wants to get up with this guy who, who happens to be like a mortician or something like that. And so she dies within the first five minutes and then he's like, you know, we can't have that shit. And so he stuffs her like taxidermies her basically and just 
kind of carries her around wherever he goes. Like there's one scene where he, she's in the truck with him. Like just kind of, there's one scene where he puts her in the bed and she's just moving around in the house. Like he just kind of keeps her around. Like she's still well, alive. He, he, cause he's like a, he's a mortician, right? Yeah. So at, after the funeral, when everybody's gone, he injects her corpse with like some bright yellow shit. I guess that's to preserve her. And so, yeah. you know, one of the other, I don't know if it was, I don't know who the guy was in relation to him, but somebody sees him do it. Right. But um, the funny part is, is the whole movie, this guy is very, he's emotionally damaged. That the love of, is emotionally damaged throughout the whole movie. I mean, like you just said, he's carrying her corpse around for the entire movie. But the funny thing is, as he's grieving, it doesn't take no but 30 seconds for him to start grieving to his housemaid. And then within... 20 to 30 seconds he's sucking on the housemaid's titties and, and full-blown <laughs> what, affair and this like, lady is not like blinking. yeah this lady is not like somebody you would ever imagine like <laughs> want to suck on their titties <laughs> this is like <laughs> not really this is like an old yeah. school arm like if you can imagine that like yeah. that look and you're right like he is like right up on that like immediately and he's then like, <laughs> he's like he i gotta get over right this. For it. i gotta get over this grief somehow this is yeah. it. As he's sobbing, doing the head motion sobbing, he um, he, he just really goes is. right into you know he really <laughs> does like, without that's exactly yeah that's exactly how that happens and like so there's basically the the only way to make this movie go on after that after she dies is he has to basically go insane and then try to like find other women and murder them and sometimes like accidentally because they find out like his secret so. In other words, he's carrying this chick around with him wherever he goes. There's one scene where, like, she's in the bed with him, and he's making out with this woman. <laughs> and then he, like, pulls the cover down to show her corpse while he's, like, who's laying, like, right there beside of the other woman. And he's, like, looking at her all creepily while he's making out with this other woman. He's and then she, like, huh? Yeah. Huh? hoping, hopefully, hoping that she gets like a positive reception. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> and like, then she notices. <laughs> she notices, and she's like, "She's." I don't think it was the the reaction he wanted because she freaks yeah. out, and then he has to murder her with a hatchet. Like a large hatchet is a big part yeah. of this movie too. And it's probably the coolest scene in the movie too because he has her. He puts her in a bathtub, and the um the acid they use it reminded me of like the uh the blob from the 80s blob it's like this bright bubblegum pink and you see her disintegrate that's like the, the main card they use for the 2d yeah. screen which is so that's a pretty cool scene but like you said he, he was he was definitely going for like uh you know hoping this woman was a little <laughs> bit more open-minded than she turned out to be i think that's not yeah. the move on the first you know encounter you don't want to just especially when she's a hitchhiker and she has no idea <laughs> who the fuck you are either yeah yeah you know? but there, you know, there's another scene. Too. This movie is also very mean spirited, though, man, because there's yeah, a scene at the be so. a beginning of it where, like, he um, he's killing this girl, and right before he does, though, he plucks all of her fingernails out with a pair of pliers. Oh, I and I was notes. like, God, it's one I, of it's 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 tough to watch. I was like, Jesus Christ, man. Yeah, and I'm I was like, is because I, I was trying to figure out is he doing this because he wants the nails for the corpse. Or is he just doing it because he's a dick? Like, I don't know. Yes, he's just doing it because he's a dick. There's no yeah. rhyme or reason. Yeah. And it's, but, but it's like, and it goes on for a disturbingly long period of time. Like, all the fingernails you, on one hand. You would think a guy in his position that, you know, he's has the corpse of his wife handy because he can't let her go. And that some people uh, might have a really bad reaction to that. You think a guy in his position would hurry up and, you know, kill him immediately, shoot him, stab him, whatever, get rid of him. No, he goes above and beyond to kill these people. Like, yeah, he, and there's no rhyme or reason because they don't ever hint that he's like a psychopath. He's just like a mourning, grieving guy um, that just likes, you know, he has to dispose of these people. And he, you know, of course, do what you do. You throw them in a bat of acid or you rip their fingernails off slowly. And it really makes no sense whatsoever. No, he's very sadistic about everything that he does in this movie, which but the, you're right. Doesn't really fit with anything else. But like the catch is like the maid, which by the way, hold on. Now that there's a quote in this where him and the maid, they have a very tumultuous relationship because she wants him. She wants yep. him badly. And, you know, he, he, he does the whole, you know, boobage thing and uh you know the sucking and but it goes nowhere because he still wants his wife right 
so she's like desperate, like trying to get him like, no, you want me. And she does everything she can. Um, and at one point they have a fight. And I swear to God, this line made me laugh out loud. He yells at her and smacks her and he goes, get out of here, you old slut. <laughs> <laughs> there's one. Yeah, there's one part in the beginning of it where um, before she dies, where the hospital calls and like she t- <laughs> she tells him. And she's like, uh, he gets, he's getting out of the bathtub or something. And she tells him, she's like, oh, the hospital called. And he's like, why didn't you tell me, you dumb idiot? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. This she's guy is. Like, she's <laughs> totally in love with this guy. And he's like, you, you fucking bitch. Why, you know, <laughs> get out of my house. But he really needs her because she does all the laundry. And, whatnot. and that's the thing, too, is that. <laughs> that's why, yeah, that's the biggest that's, part. That's, that's the only reason why she's around is because she, she washes his clothes and shit. But, but she's in love with him so much that she is the one that kind of, um, what's the word, I'm, enables yeah. His, his, yeah. his whole. Like, she's trying to, if she could get into a menage a trois with the corpse and the guy, she definitely would. Like, she's doing everything it's really, she can. It's really weird because you're right. This, so she she's the one that kills the the wife or the whatever the girlfriend whoever it was she she puts a curse on her right like a witch yeah but then she's like super obsessed with him even though she knows that like he doesn't want anybody except this woman and she helps him like dispose of and kill all these other women it just none of that really like plot wise makes any sense but uh, why not just put a curse on him to like fall in love with her or something it's a long way around um there's a scene too that really I, I got nauseous watching and I'm not one that's like, Ooh, you know, when it comes to it, but there's certain things from like, God damn, that's disgusting. And there's a scene where I don't know if she's just trying to prove herself to him. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm about it. I'm down with it. Where she starts eating a soup that has like guts and intestines. Oh, in it, and yeah. she's like Doing all this. And I was like, what the fuck? What? So, like, so he ba- that, like D'Amato basically like what he did. It seems like was he took all the stuff that like made Fulci, you know, work but then he kind of ups it like really like in these films like i mean he this, stays on the really gruesome shit like a long just, time man i was just looking at my notes and i remember this there uh was a scene where she basically just jerks him off while he's staring at the wife's propped up corpse on a chair and it's like right there's a lot of fuck? yeah <laughs> a lot of stuff like that in this movie yeah but you know what? I have to respect it because we're talking about all this shit. And there's some downtime, but I'd say out of all his movies, this one has the least amount of filler. At least they're like, it's kind of, it's 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 paced the best out of any of these movies by it far. It is, And there's yeah. a lot of memorable shit in it. It's where we're like uh, his other movies. But I feel as though this one, he sprinkles in a lot of stuff throughout where you're not waiting an hour and a half for stuff to go crazy. Like, you know, with um, the Grim Reaper. That's true. The Grim Reaper is yeah. a lot of just walking around an island and then like yeah. 15 minutes of like really it just intense, crazy stuff. This movie is like one scene after another of intense, yeah. just like crazy off the wall stuff where you're watching it and you're like, I really like shouldn't be watching this. No, it's, <laughs> it's that's it's, how you feel throughout the movie. It's perverted and perverse and like disgusting and immoral. And it really stands out, but it's got like at least there's some attempt at style to it because you also have Goblin doing the music. That's the best part to me, and that's that to me the music. Yeah. It it goes back and forth from what you would think you know a Goblin score is to like this this weird like daytime soap opera thing, but it kind of works because you have this daytime soap opera music playing while you know what traditionally would be a daytime soap opera storyline a love triangle but the thing is is that one of the members of the love triangle is dead and a deceased corpse so it like yeah i don't know it, just, it to me it just works and the goblin <laughs> music it really <laughs> ties it together well the goblin music at the beginning when that music hit because it hits at the very beginning i was like i oh, know yeah. who that is like you immediately know like who mm-hmm. that is like because the synth score comes in like underneath the the guitar and stuff and yeah. i'm pretty sure that that fucking song is also in hell of the living dead if i'm not oh, mistaken that same bruno song I, n- there's no doubt bruno matai probably stole the, the, one of their songs from this too i mean but just, uh, I, the, I guaranteed it was one that snuck under the radar because nobody's watching this movie like they are dawn of the dead so no. you just get caught in the dawn i guarantee you every bit of piece of music from goblin is probably from like six other different movies and I was thinking though, like uh, when I was watching, I was like, "This score really is like too good for this movie." <laughs> like, 
<laughs> score is insanely good. And yeah, overall, I like this movie, but the score, it, it, it deserved better. Like, it deserved the score when it starts up, you think you're like in a mood for like some badass, fast pace, yeah. you know. Doesn't match like, the uh, movie really. No, like, no, no, no. You're you're thinking you're like the score to this, you're expecting something like Peak Argento, where you're like, you're gonna get punched in the face with some shit. You're gonna see exactly some, this is like a slow burn. So it really it 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 works good, but like you could tell that maybe this, you know, it would have been better in a better movie. But like I said, overall, I think this is probably his best that I've seen. Uh, here's the here's the thing about it too though even though this score kind of like it the score is awesome but it doesn't fit it's still no. i cannot stand the scores to some of his other films man no no like, no, no, no jesus Christ. grim reaper like aka anthropophagus like that the score to that movie just made me want to bash my head in like it's, it's just a bunch of weird like synth like stuff just kind of playing all the time throughout the movie that doesn't oh it's, it'll just drive it's like nails on chalkboard well uh, before we get to that i the ending of this movie, they have a, a big twist. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Third yeah, act yeah. twist. You got to get into that because I when that happened, I was like, what? Well, you know, really? there had to be something. Like, there's there's no, you got to end this movie somehow, right? Like, right, yeah. I mean, the, the main protagonist is fucking dead already. So it's like, it has to yeah. end some way. So what happens is her sister shows up who, surprise, is a her fucking twin sister. I, I and he's already, sister. yeah, he's already like, you know, all spaced out wanting her. So the minute he sees this chick, he's like, Oh, this is where we're going with this, you know, which, which brings up the question. If you knew she had an identical twin sister the whole time, <laughs> I'm not saying it's moral, but wouldn't it be a whole hell of a lot healthier to just get yeah. with the sister than her fucking corpse? I mean, maybe like, ask her out on a date. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Like, exactly. Maybe he's you already like, no. know what she looks. You already know what she looks like naked for the most part. I mean, he's like, no, it's too soon, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> let me yeah. just go ahead and dig this chick up real quick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah it's too soon oh, for me to geez. ask her out <laughs> so so of course the the twin sister finds out like what is going on and freaks out as you know you probably would in this scenario too right. as a normal and, person would yeah and then chaos kind of ensues from there um towards the end of the movie which yeah like you said it's it's probably probably his best film if you yeah. want to say that anything is his best film uh, this would probably be it. It did influence like a bunch of other filmmakers. I can tell you did that. You, did you think, and t- I, I know this might sound blasphemous to a lot of people and call me crazy, but I was getting reminded a little bit of Hellraiser with the whole love triangle and her bringing people to the house for him to basically That's true. just kill and shit. Like, I, I hadn't wonder, thought about that, but yeah. Because it, I'm not saying, uh, you know, Hellraiser stole from this movie, but I'm just saying I can definitely see if, if, um, What's his name? Uh, Clive Barker. Clive Barker. For one, for some reason, I was thinking Clive Owen, and I'm like, that's definitely. Not him. <laughs> it's not the same. No. <laughs> it's not the same guy. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I I could see it if somebody said that he was kind of inspired by this because it's it's a very weird and sick and perverse movie, which Hellraiser is too. And there's this weird fucked up um, kind of love affair going on between two mentally deranged people in which innocent people are getting brought to the main location and getting murdered so yeah I, it, it reminded me of that of a little bit and I, you know what the the plot of this was super creative uh i'm looking for my laptop charger so it doesn't die on me midstream the the movie was pretty creative it, it's not perfect i'm not saying it's a 10 out of 10 but compared to the other shit we've seen i'd say this is yeah this easily is best i just feel like this was the good combination of like what he was trying to do that actually worked so he he's trying to create like this atmosphere of just you know dread and nastiness and perversion and things like that and like this movie actually captures that really really well and in some of the other films it's like that kind of goes off the rails maybe a little mm-hmm. bit too much one way or the other but in this one it's like the right overall balance if you're going to have a corpse you know humping uh slasher film then this <laughs> is the right balance of all your key elements really could you imagine if Siskel and ebert reviewed this movie back in the day Dude, be funny I, like who the fuck honestly who are you going to recommend this movie to like yeah. who would you ever be like you know what you should watch is <laughs> beyond yeah. the darkness because people like if anybody ever watched this they would just be like you're insane like there's if something. i ever 
if I ever run into somebody that plays bass for like a, a death metal band, then yeah. I'll recommend. <laughs> Yeah, Beyond that's the, the darkest. Outside of that, that's nah, the key yeah. demographic for this movie. Yeah. I'm telling you. If I run into a guy who tells me he runs a haunted house during <laughs> Halloween time and he has a beard that goes in two different directions, then I'll recommend Beyond the Darkness. Yeah. If you run into a carnival worker that yeah. has like a God smack shirt on, then that is the guy you, that this is for. Yeah. Then it's like a Jeff Foxworthy bit coming true. <laughs> then I'd recommend Beyond the Darkness. Yeah. So let's if get you some... have a pentagram tatted on your chest. Then I'd refer, I'd recommend Beyond the Dark. If you watch August Underground Mortem at Christmas, then I recommend Beyond the Darkness. If your name is Old Curly Jaws, then I recommend Beyond the Darkness. That's so true. That's the new, you might be a redneck bit. <laughs> so, okay, let's get some comments here real quick. So Max Arena says that uh, Beyond the Darkness is a favorite of his. That is a uh, bold statement, sir, and I appreciate you being honest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean... Uh, the mayor says that he's not good people, which we already knew that, really. Um, Phantasmat says it's a great soundtrack, which I think we all agree on. Mm -hmm. uh, the mayor, yeah, it's called something that I can't pronounce. Bueo Mega or something like that. Bueo, wow. Yeah. That's the alternate title. Sounds like a jobber. <laughs> it does, Bueo Mega. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Soft Serve says that this movie is based on a very loose remake of a 60s film. I would say this is a, would be a very, very loose remake. Yes. Yeah. I'm sure I he don't... added a few things. <laughs> yeah. I feel like this is a straight yeah. Yeah, homage. What is the film, Soft Serve? Because I would like to know. It's like an Ingmar Bergman movie. Like Wes... Didn't, didn't Ingmar Bergman make uh, The Last House on the Left before Wes Craven did? Oh, yeah. It was uh, like The Birds and Suicides. Yeah. yeah. I never, never, I need to check that one out. Uh, Darren Bro says he would highly recommend his Death Smiles on a Murder, which I saw on Tubi. By the way, you can watch basically like every halfway decent film that he's done on Tubi if you want to. Like, or pretty every much. piece of shit film he's done. Yeah, pretty much yeah. all of his notable films are on Tubi, so. Yeah. Except for, and this may be a good thing, uh, the shark film. So. Which one? Which one? Um, uh, I forgot the name. Deep Blood. Except for Deep Blood. It's not on Tubi. Yeah, I don't know. I, I Yeah, I had the Severn version of it, which, big mistake. How you fuck up a shark movie that bad? Jesus we'll talk, Christ. We'll talk about how you do that here very shortly. Uh, da, 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 da. Witchfinder says this movie would fit in very well with the Cannibal Corpse music video. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the key demographic. Some guy being like, have you ever seen Beyond the Darkness? <laughs> it's like, no. Uh, you ever heard of Eviscerator? Yeah. Yes, I have. have it's called... It's called. If anybody ever came up to me, unironically <laughs> said, "Have you ever seen Deep Blood?" I would be like, "Dude, it's I'll like a talk big that guy for like on. two hours." Yeah. Ever seen Deep Blood, man? <laughs> it's like, as a matter of fact, <laughs> uh, I did a show on it one time. It's called The Third Eye. Now I'm going to definitely have to figure out that. Like, uh oh, yep. Yeah. Okay, so. You want to move on to the next one, which I feel like is suitably yeah. even more depressing than this one. Oh, yeah. If that's possible. But mm -hmm. um, the next film that he would have come out with that, I guess, I mean, he, listen, this guy made hundreds of films, but I'm just kind of going through and picking out the ones that are kind of notable or that, that people kind of know mm -hmm. or that have some sort of notoriety. So the next one, and I think this is the one that most people would know, honestly. This is, it. this is, I, even I knew about this movie be way before I seen it. Like I had seen this movie. Yeah. Uh, Wes and I actually watched this right around the time when it came out on DVD. So I remembered this, but this has got like a thousand different uh, aliases. But the one that mm -hmm. I know it by is uh, Anthropophagus. AKA the Grim Reaper, AKA uh, Savage Island, AKA Savage Island. the Beast. The yeah. Beast. Yeah. There we go. Good one. So, <laughs> this, so it starts off like Jaws. Um, okay. That's basically the best way I could, like, it starts off with this uh, couple and a dog. At least he made one movie that reminds you of Jaws. 
<laughs> yeah, it's not <laughs> deep blood. Not, not deep. This blood. movie is much, much more like Jaws than Deep Blood. Yeah. Uh, it starts off with this couple that kind of exploring this island in some romantic location. I'm assuming it's Italy. And they like, she goes out to this raft to, or boat. It's not a raft. It's a boat. And she goes out to this like canoeish kind of boat. And then like finds what you assume is a dead body in there. And then gets pulled underwater. And then the dude gets a hatchet to the head and the dog mm -hmm. runs off. And you never see like anything like, what exactly is happening or anything like that you just like i mean who the person is or anything like that you just kind of see like the deaths yeah. so fast forward a little bit and then there's this random crew of what are they like skiers mountainers like going on a vacation something like that and i thought they were like on weren't they like couples like on a like maybe not a cruise but like they knew each other right because it was like there was two couples and then another woman who joins in, who's not really part of the group. Who's kind of like a new. Yeah. That's person. the most bizarre part is that she's yeah. in this fucking like, she's in this like elevator or tram thing with them. And then she's just like, Hey, um, you guys mind if I tag along? Because like, I need to go to this place. And they're like, yeah, well, fuck it. Well, yeah, <laughs> they don't exactly. know. I don't know you or anything, but yeah. You no, yeah. Yeah, stranger, come on and invade <laughs> our, our fucking vacation we have going on here. Can you imagine you, if you're on you, vacation and like some woman just walked up to you and was like, Hey, I know I don't know anything, but you might about tag along for the rest of like the vacation. Yeah. Like, well, if yeah. I was her and I, I they said yeah, and I got in there, and then the first real conversation I ever had with somebody is about fucking tarot cards. I'd jump right off the boat like, <laughs> and just swim to the island. Yeah, that's right. Well, this <laughs> this lady, by the way, this lady is Tisa Farrow, who is Mia right. Farrow's sister, who of course was in Zombie, and th were those the only two films she was ever in? Because I feel like even if they were, then she was in two of the most notorious, like yeah, Italian films yeah. ever. Because that's the thing about this movie that I don't know if a lot of people notice, like the reputation this movie has, um, it's kind of legendary in its own right. It's not, you know, it. It was uh, because of the stuff we're going to get into later on in the movie. It got added to the video nasty list in the UK, which a ton of other movies had. So it's not that big of a deal. But what it was, was there was actually reports of like uh, in Liverpool, England. I, I, I got all this because I watched the Joe Bob version of it. So I'm not oh, yeah, yeah. Not when it comes to this. So he kind of broke it down. And basically, you know, the, the police were breaking in people's houses and taking it because it was, you know, it was filth. It was, uh, you know pervert it whatever they said and it, it just got this word of mouth reputation that that particular movie was the one that they were really seizing and going after you know which is funny because there was a lot of you know pretty gory nasty movies on the video nasties and i could definitely see how this one was the one that pushed the edge on it just because yeah. of the shit that it, the stuff that it builds up to when it finally happens at the end it's like god damn man god yeah because like you know there's a lot of movies where like you know this one goes all the way and all this shit yeah well, this one fucking really does go off. Yeah. Like, this one goes for fucking broke, man. It pushes yeah. all his poker chips in and says, let's go. Like, it ain't no fucking around with this one. The ending, so, the ending, like 15 minutes of this movie, I'm just, I was watching it kind of like with my mouth open. I, was, I cannot believe they went like in the direction <laughs> that they went. But, you know, so, okay. So we should back up though. Some because so yeah, like, there's, uh, it, there's like these two couples. This chick joins them. Um, one of the couples. The, the, the guys kind of blend in together because they're they kind do of they're all kind fuck. of vanilla dudes that they're just... vanilla as fuck the women really can kind of tell apart because you have the one chick that's the new girl that's there to go to the island whatever then you have the other that's pregnant she's pregnant they let you know she's pregnant she's wearing like a, a dress to her ankles she's right like, at oh, the I'm beginning pregnant. yeah yep. i'm pregnant oh look at my you know just so you know i i figured something was going to happen with that but never in my wildest dreams could i have imagined what i'd see at the end I and didn't. You had, Honestly, like oh, when I saw no. that, I, when I saw that the first time, though, I was like, no, that ain't fucking going to do nothing with. I mean, they're just going to, you know, tease around with that because yeah. that's a good tension builder or whatever. No. Yeah. <laughs> Not Joe D'Amato. He's like, fuck you. Here we go. So, and then the second woman is she reads tarot cards. I think her husband said, like, or her, her husband or boyfriend, whatever, is just like a total asshole to her. He's like, this. Which I don't believe in tarot cards either, but I'm not going to go up to somebody, let alone the person I'm dating, being like, yeah, you fucking idiot. Look at these fucking tarot cards. 
like in front of other people. Like he's just the biggest <laughs> asshole yeah. to this one. And she's just like, her reaction is just like slowly puts the tarot cards away. And it's like, God damn, that's mean. <laughs> that's yeah, the he... mean spiritness of these movies. Like you fucking idiot. So, oh, 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 we forgot like the, the main kind of like reason why this woman is going is because, and of course I was like, son of a bitch, this is the third director in a row where they've had a blind woman in their fucking third Italian film director in a row that has like a film with a blind woman is like a central part of the film. Right. Yeah. Every one of these guys, Bruno Mattei, Liberto Bava, and now Joe D'Amato has a film where there's a blind woman. That's like the main centerpiece of the film. Well, and they saw, the, they saw the beyond and they were like, well, we got to have a, a blind yeah. in our movie now. So in, in this one, like Tisa Farrow's whole thing is, is that she's got to go to this villa and take care of this blind girl. That was her whole reason for like coming along on this vacation. So she could get to this spot. So they get there after, you know, like they're Island hopping around on this vacation, whatever they get there. And then like, <laughs> They find her in one of the most like bizarre scenes ever, like in a fucking barrel of what is it, blood? Is she just in like a barrel of blood somewhere? Yeah. And yeah. she just pops up with like a knife and she's just like stabbing. Uh, she slices this one dude on the back yeah. and he's like, oh fuck. And by the way, it takes forever to get to this point. Like the movie Oh yeah, is like I've so skipped fucking slow. I've like, skipped a ton of like bullshit to get to that. Yeah. The first hour of this movie is a slog, which is unfortunately is a trend with all of his movies, but like Good lord, man! Like, and I, I'd say this is the second best, but like the pacing in this is just is horrible. Like, he has this bad tendency of people just wandering around. So to give you an idea, yeah, like the stuff that I just left out was basically them just wandering around like different like ruins of places and you know castles and villas and all this stuff. And then at one point, like one of them sees a woman. They're like, nobody lives here. Like everybody's gone or whatever. Like. And then they see like a woman up in like, you know, a window or something like that. And they're like, yeah. oh shit, like there's actually somebody here. So we're in like the right place. Or but there's like 30 minutes of that, of them just kind of like wandering around doing that. But they get to the island, right? And the boat, it's like a, like a nice boat. It's not a yacht, but it's like, you know, a pretty nice boat. And it just drifts away. And they're real nonchalant about it. They were like, oh, well, it'll come back. It's, what do you mean it'll come back? There's nobody on the boat. Like they're, they're like, we're stranded here. It'll come back. But let's try to find somebody. Or let's try to find something on this island or somebody. And doesn't, I can't remember, does the, the pregnant woman, doesn't she disappear too? Oh, yeah. Like right, right in the beginning, like yeah. right as they get to this island where they're at. Yeah. Uh, after they wander around for, you know, God and forever. And they're just kind of talking and bullshitting. And it's really not, though, like doing anything for the movie. It's not like it's helping to set up the plot or anything. No plot is being it's advanced. Just, yeah. It's just a bunch of nonsense. And then they get there and then she immediately kind of disappears. And this is the part that killed me. So she disappears and they think that she's out like somewhere and they think they know where she is, but a thunderstorm comes and they're like, well, we can't fucking look forward tonight. Like we got to take it. They go to sleep. And they're like, we'll get to her in the morning. A pregnant like, woman. She's pregnant. Yeah. A pregnant woman in the middle of a thunderstorm. And these fuckers are just like, no, we can't like, it's raining. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying, man. It's just the mean spiritness of it all, of all these yeah. movies. It's just something as simple as that. And at one point, they're like, well, you know, she'll find us. I'm like, will she? I mean, if she's lost, maybe not. Oh, yeah. man. So, yeah, like, I don't, I don't think she will. Yeah. So, like, us to keep fast forward through all the bullshit of them just going, oh, looking around, oh, what's that? Oh, you know, at trees and, and rubble and whatnot. Um, they finally get to this big mansion. And that's when it finally. Yeah, starts the, the plot, you know, about an hour and 10 minutes in, it finally starts going like, all right. Once they start. find the, the blind girl, that's when things kind of start like picking up because she's yeah. like, she's the first indication of what's going on in the fucking actual story. Cause she's like, you know, there's this dude and he's around and he's evil and I can smell him. That's what she says. She's like, whenever he's around, I can. So that's your kind of setup. Like, so mm. she can't see, but she knows when he's around and she tells like all the rest of them, like he's here because I can smell him. He smells like blood. And there's a really cool scene, though, I thought, where, like, the, this is later on, like, a little bit later on, but, like, the one of the dudes is like, um, I'm going to go look for him and try to figure out what's going on. And he shuts the door and locks it, but he's, like, the guy's behind the door, and he's just kind of standing there, like, staring at the blind chick. And I thought that was a really cool scene. Yeah, yeah, that, that, was, that, was, that was good, yeah. Uh, Close-up of his face, which 
I don't know about the makeup effects and this. I don't know what he's supposed to be either. Like, I know he's supposed to be insane and driven insane by what happens later. Like when you find out he's what a, happens later, he's a cannibal, but it doesn't explain why he looked like he, somebody threw a bat of acid at him. That's, that's yeah. It. You know, he's in like, well, fuck. I, so I don't know how to explain this without explaining the rest of it. So I'm just going to try. So, the dude, the main guy, the anthropo- anthropophagus guy, Grim Reaper dude, he the was, yeah, they just, the beast. They, <laughs> the beast. they find a bunch of just regular pictures of him around this, this villa, this house. And they're kind of, so he was once just like a normal dude. They figure this out. And it kind of flashes back to him. And he's on this boat that's apparently lost at sea. And him and his wife and daughter are kind of all dying. So the only thing I could think of was the sun exposure. That, that's what that's supposed to be. Is like mm. it just like melted his head or something, like a candle. That's kind of what his head looks like. Yeah. I maybe. got nothing. I got nothing else for what it's he, he kills the wife and eats her and the daughter, right? That's that's implied. And ever since then he's gone crazy. He's a crazy cannibal and he he walks around looking like a melted candle and he has a big meat cleaver in his hand and he's just, he's slicing. And, yes. um, you know, I, I'll say this, the, the, the effects of him, they don't look that good, but they look like fucking, you know, I don't know. They look like modern day special effects compared to porno Holocaust, which <laughs> I'm going to spend like five minutes on that movie and we'll quickly move on. But yeah, that's the holy shit, man. It looks like as, so, as CK would say, it looked like somebody that would uh, shop at Bull Creek flea market, the <laughs> porno Holocaust version of the fucking anthropophagus killer. So, so anthropophagus is basically kind of like a takeoff of like all the legendary stories of like what happens if you eat human flesh, basically like you go mad and like, that's what you crave. And yada yada yada, and yeah, because the and, whole lifeboat scenario is like one of those old timey what like fisherman yeah. stories, you know. Exactly, like yeah, you get you get lost out there, and then you have to resort to certain things that you wouldn't resort to, and it mm-hmm. turns him into like a savage maniac killer. That's kind of what the movie is about. Yeah. So rolling in past that into like the you know once you get past the blind girl and figuring out what's going on. And then you figure out who he is and what he's doing there. And he's already like killed a couple people by now with, you know, hatchets and different means and stuff like that. When it gets to the third act, that's when like shit gets real. Like, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. When you, so there's a scene that kind of opens this up where they go out and they're the thunderstorms over and they go out and they're exploring, trying to figure out where this woman is. And they're looking at all these different places and they find this huge tomb and it's got like all of these different skeletons. And you assume that this is like the anthropophagus fucking mm-hmm. layer or whatever. Yeah. And then they find uh, one of the dudes who's the husband or whatever, like finds the pregnant lady. And she's just like, she's laying there with all the other corpses as if she's getting ready to be, you know, a corpse or whatever too. Like she's just going to be added to this giant layer. So I don't know how to say exactly what happens next card. So I'm gonna let you do it. Go ahead. <laughs> So this is with the pregnant woman, right? Yeah, yeah this is when they find, okay. find her. All right. So he's in the tomb, and it's he basically uh, he goes after the most vulnerable, which is the pregnant woman. And what can I say? He goes for the meat. He goes straight for the womb and just rips out the fetus and starts munching down like it's Taco Tuesday. I was like, and the way they film it, so you're kind of like, you're sitting there and and you're like, no, they're not yeah. And he them. he has the flashback like directly before the flashback of him like having to kill his kid and then like eat the kid and the and the wife, right? Mm-hmm. He has the the flashback in his crazy head and then kind of just goes berserk and strangles the woman and then just you see like he pulls out what it, the whatever it's the a, hell that's supposed to be it, it's supposed to be a fetus with the two yes with Santa and all of it and he's just Arr, you know like that and like at that point it. at that point yeah. i was like holy shit like yeah it's they yeah. fucking went for it man i like i said my reaction was like wow 
bravo because I, I <laughs> there's very few things i can see nowadays where i'm like fuck they really did that and but, that was one of them for me too yeah. i was like yeah there i was not expecting that like i know yeah. i know i'd seen this fucking movie before too but for some reason i did not remember so, that at all the original u.s cut that scene was cut out completely oh well that might so make sense. it was cut out completely it was banned in england like i said people specifically that scene is what really fucking did it in where they went hardcore on this movie in particular and i think overall that's what helped this legacy yeah. because if you look at the movie as a whole i'd say like 70 percent of it is boring as fuck and yeah. then like once the third act starts it's it gets pretty damn good and it's like all right and you kind of get your money's worth especially with the scene because <laughs> Say what you want. You'll never. You don't see shit like this often in movies. Not even from other Italian no. movies. You know. That's what they I'm saying. Like, don't go that far. If you look at like Fulci or Argento or any of those guys, you know, where people talk about like how hardcore Fulci was, there was never a scene in a movie where Fulci did anything like this. No. I was just kind of like, okay. And then yeah. so you're kind of like just astonished by that. And Tisa Farrow's running around and doing her shit like while all this is going on. So he kills both of them. Yeah. And then he kind of like goes after Tisa Farrow and there's a long period towards the end of this movie where it's just spent like chasing her ass around like this castle villa thing. I guess it's Scooby-Doo style. Through the yeah. It had a montage through the doors in the hallway. <laughs> but at the end, she falls down a well, essentially yeah. like a giant well and he falls down with her and then he's kind of climbing up and she's caught on a rope he that's catches, a good scene that that's is a good, good scene yeah it's a it's a pretty damn good sequence so i was like oh shit like it was creative she's taught her hands all caught up and he's directly underneath there and he's like trying to grab at her and it's like all right that you know they had a, a well-crafted scene in mind here that yeah they, i think it actually was pretty good and him coming up out of that well is pretty fucking great too like just the side of it. and he's got her like by the by the rope still he's holding on to the rope that's got her like hand on it pulling her towards him and this goes on for about, you know, a minute. And then out of nowhere, like one bro that's left over, like takes a pickaxe, I think, to his stomach. And <laughs> this is the scene everybody remembers. I don't know this why. Is the, this is, this is like, the cover art of the movie. Like, yeah. if you know, one thing about the scene, it's this, this, this image right here. The scene you should all like remember is the yeah, scene the, right before this. But like everybody remembers this scene. <laughs> I guess you can't put the baby scene on a box cover in a VHS. No, I, that, <laughs> you're right. That probably, yeah. probably doesn't work. <laughs> no. So, like, he gets cut through the middle and his guts spill out. And then he's just like, ah, fuck it. And he's insanely, like, just, like, eats his own guts. <laughs> yeah. And what an image, too. Like, the he end. bent over with, yeah. And then yeah. the end. So it literally is like on the a end. high mark. Yeah, they ended on a high mark. <laughs> There's no, no, like, you know. Nothing else. That's the end no, of the movie. Nothing learned here. No. No uh, gained. No carrying. No, certainly nothing gained. <laughs> um, if you can slog through the first hour of this movie, and it's tough, I, the last 25 minutes of it is worth it um, because it's just batshit crazy, and it goes for broke. Um, the way I felt broke. about this movie was kind of like, I was super disappointed watching it because I was like, I know that I've seen this movie and I know that it was like, and I, it left an impression on me, but at, like at the first hour, you're just like, there's nothing fucking happening. And then you get to that last act. And you're like, Oh oh yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you just hang around on this one. Cause I feel like it's worth it. Yeah. If you're, if you're watching it, just stick it through. And uh, at least, once the end pops up, it ends on a high note to where you can be like, all right, that was that was good. I mean, well, a title card after a guy's eating his own guts, basically. And then yeah. it's just the end. That's it. That's I, it. I, I, I yeah, like that. fade to black. There you go. I, I like abrupt endings sometimes. And uh, I mean, they, at least they didn't draw it out. Here's the here's the second money shot we're going to give you. Um, boom. And then you had a cool little sequence with her in the well. That was like a good suspenseful sequence. It didn't rely on gore or anything. It was like very... It's like a oh shit sequence, and then of course the baby thing is, you know, we're just good people. We're good people here, so we don't, you yeah, know, we don't recommend don't, eating unborn children. I do not condone that at all. You know? But I will Look, say I, that it's one of the more shocking images I've seen in a film. Yeah, I'm pretty sure some of the ninety something year old, you know, members of Congress and our government practice this all the time, eating children to stay, That's right. to stay alive, but, whatnot. Yep. But uh, we, uh, I don't know about Dead Pit, but I do not co-sign. 
I do not. I don't so, condone it either. <laughs> that is a, that is my stamp on this movie. I don't condone yes. this. No. Okay. So the comments, <laughs> the mayor says, uh, making this movie took a lot of guts. Uh, yeah. Quite literally. Uh, Ryan Atkins says Anthropophagus was the first movie Joe Bob Briggs ever wrote a review on. I yeah, did and not he, know that. He talked about it. He gave it when he did his driving totals. He's like, I originally gave this a pretty bad review. But like he explained, when he first saw the movie, all the gore was cut out. So could you imagine watching this movie with all the gore cut out? You'd be like, no, like it's horrible. But with that in, with that put back in, it just totally changes. Like I can totally see. It would be like, like the I'm worst like, Travel Channel show ever if you yeah, didn't oh, have yeah. the gore in this fucking movie. Yeah, like the, the, those scenes, those sequences at the end make the movie. Like there's nothing yeah. without it. There's quite literally nothing without it. Dirk says that a lot of people are divided on this one. A lot of folks say it's slow, but I love the setup, the tone, and the atmosphere is great. Uh, I forgot about the psychic chick in it that basically tells them, yeah, like you're stupid. We shouldn't be here. Like one of yeah. the chicks is the tarot card reading chick that's psychic apparently. And she's like, there's evil and yada, 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 but it doesn't really matter. Bullied. She gets bullied by her husband. You're like, look at yeah. this door. I'm like, dude, you, you married the, you married the fucking gypsy. Like what? <laughs> she's a rock and roll gypsy. Yeah. Dirk also says uh, that uh, the the follow up to this film, which is absurd, is the best Halloween ripoff. And God, I wish I would have watched that instead of Porno Holocaust. I just watched it because it was on it was on Tubi too, and I was like, yeah. ah, "Fuck it, I'll just watch all his stuff on it." It is. Uh, well, I'll talk about it. I'll talk yeah. about it after you talk about Porno Holocaust. Um, yeah. Let's see. There's a uh, there's a, fun, a ton of funny ass shit in. Amato's films. Scratch Bruno says, "Good old George Eastman." Now George Eastman, uh, he's in quite a was, few of these movies. Yeah, he was in Absurd too, and he's actually he's got to be a huge dude, man. Like mm -hmm. I don't, he, I don't know how big this guy is, but like in both these movies, he towers over like everybody in these movies. So I'm thinking he's got to be six five or above. But he's pretty imposing, a pretty imposing dude. Mm -hmm. He's like big, and so you get the feeling he could probably do some damage. Now I'm not saying that you want him to eat your placentas but i'm just saying like he looks right. like he, he could fuck somebody up yeah the incredible melted candle man i swear to god that's what he looks like he looks like he does yeah he Carter, does candle wax call it uh, candle wax a perfect description of him apparently you look <laughs> you look like austin butler the guy that played elvis thank and, you i appreciate it that's that's high praise hey, if i start walking around uh faking an elvis accent for the rest of my life then I'll blame you, Jackson Jack. <laughs> Stuntman's in here. He said he pulled out those innards. Yeah, he cool. certainly he did. did. Disturbing. Nom, nom, nom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, he had a mouthful. Jackson Speaking Jack says, of... I've never heard of Absurd, but I got to check it out if that's a Halloween knock. It, is it worth your time? That's hard to say, really. Like, Are any of these films really worth anyone's time? Um, no. No. <laughs> not really <laughs> kind of like the, yeah uh, yeah in absurd okay, look, the first the first two we talked about i'd say are, are, are somewhat worth your time i'd say from this point onwards no the answer is no i would say absurd is um like if you liked grim reaper then you probably like absurd it's the same guy yeah. he's just playing like a slasher role and there's a little bit more action. It basically there's like a ton of scenes in this in absurd that are like the uh, Fulci um, uh, drill scene. That's mm. just like I, I feel like that he just like wanted to copy that scene in different ways, like over and over again in absurd. So that's kind of what that movie is to me. But anyway, uh, Scratch Bruno says he's six foot nine. That sounds correct. So, yeah. I got Ray Mysterio's theme song stuck in my head now. <laughs> <laughs> I just put that together. <laughs> uh, Not six one nine. Yeah. He's six foot nine. Close enough. Uh, yeah. So okay, do you want to talk about the, yeah. the genius of this? Because I didn't see this Born. because I could not find this anywhere, and I was like, Yeah, I, I don't I recommend. There, it's on some sites. Um, I don't know if they're safe sites to visit. You know, I don't even know if I should say the site's name. It's a funny name. It's very catchy. It's called Spank Bang. Again, don't nice. go to that site because because we're good people. 
Yeah, um, we don't want you to go to that side. We're just and we don't want you to. We don't want you to get a virus or anything. But uh, I watched Porno Holocaust a long time ago. Uh, I don't even know why. It was a, there was a period in time when I was in high school and I was just like, uh, <laughs> I can't wait to hear the rest of this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was looking something to spank to, and I came across a Joe D'Amato movie. No, so like, I had there was this. Day, it was called like Cinemageddon, and it was just a shitload of torrents of like old exploitation movies, specifically. That's how I saw like a lot of these uh, Italian movies. That's how, like the first time I saw um, Suspiria was through that site, the, uh, a bunch, even old like Grindhouse movies, like you know, a ton of black exploitation movies that are really good that I, I, I can't repeat the title of, but they're very good. Um, I saw Porno Holocaust, and just because of the name. I checked it out and I didn't know that at that time the cinema snob did a review of it. And it's funny because oh, yeah. I watched his review uh, recently, like a few days ago in terms of doing this. And I echo pretty much what he said. This is one of like the worst movies, but it's one of the worst. But in context of the filmography we watched today, it kind of fits right in. So it's I don't it's not as bad as I remember it because I'd never seen anything by Joe D'Amato, but it's really fucking bad. And basically, the plot is like the Grim Reaper, the same plot that we just talked about, where basically you have these group of people that are going to an island. So we're going. So we got the whole setup again. A group of people, a ragtag group of people, going to an island because there was some uh, n- nuclear explosion, radioactive explosion, and they found these giant crabs. And they're like, "Well, there was people on that island, so there might be some infected people." And they show you the giant crabs, and the giant crabs aren't giant crabs. They're like regular rock crabs. They're like this big with the you know the big ass claws, <laughs> like Maryland these, fucking these are, crabs. Yeah, yeah, they're like these are supposed to be tiny crabs, and um, so they're like, well, we're gonna go to an island and investigate. And it turns out there's a monster on the island. One of the people that were living on the island got exposed to the radiation and is now a mutant, walking around with a stick and a knife and stabbing people. Does this sound familiar to you at all so far? Yeah. Yeah. So if you thought the guy in, uh, I can't say anthro, anthro anthropophagus, anthropophagus. That's why I keep calling it the grim reaper. I have trouble yeah, just call it that. the grim reaper or it's savage grim, Island or the beast savage or the beast. Let's just call it the beast. So in the beast, um, at least with the candle wax makeup, it looks like a decent enough job. Like, all right, at least they tried. No, 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 no. And porno Holocaust, the monster is quite literally a guy. You can tell he's he's like, you can't even see the shit on his face, but you really can't see because the quality's so bad. And it, it, it there's it looked like they just glued a bunch of shit on his face, and it gave him like it looks like somebody took shitty underwear or or toilet paper and wrapped it around like a half-assed <laughs> turban, and he's just staggering around. He looks like a drunk. He doesn't look like a monster. He just looks like some fucking drunk that has a bunch of garbage on him. And he picks up stones and he cracks people in the head and he picks up logs and he cracks people in the head. And it's got the same pace as Grim Reaper, a very slow place uh, pace. But the main difference here between Porno Holocaust and Grim Reaper is where in the beast slash Grim Reaper, you have people just wandering around staring at trees and shit. That time is allocated to people just fucking and fucking for no reason. The movie, the whole setup of the movie are these people going to an <laughs> island, and one of the main chicks is like, all right, so we're going to the island, correct? They're like, yep, it's all a go. All right. And then it follows her to a brothel where she proceeds to get gangbanged by two guys for no fucking reason. The main character is this captain guy, and you see his dong quite a bit, and I shit you not, <laughs> I'm not a doctor, nor have I had genital warts, but the guy has genital warts. Oh, like, there's not, not even a question. Not even a question. Oh, and you get to see the monster's dick as well. And it looks like a warped potato. And you get to see it in all its flabby glory as it's flopping around. And the monster gets some action in as well. That's so Everybody's fucking. Um, the movie quite literally ends with every single one of these ragtag people dead except for two. And they get on a boat and they're like, we made it. We killed the monster. Oh, my God. All our friends are dead. And they start fucking on the boat. And that's how the movie ends. <laughs> it's, it's celebratory. Yes. So. It's, it's, it's it's truly yeah. terrible. It's, Here's the thing: you would one would think, but I'm betting by like the the disdain that you have for this movie, this probably is not true. One would think that if you combined like a zombie film 
with a porno, then yeah. it would at least be okay. But I feel like it's not. I feel like it's like it, the worst of those two things. It's the worst of those two things. And it's like, you know, I'm not like a big porn guy. I just, you know, never was my thing. But like, even I know I'm like, all right, this is like bad porn. Cause like, I isn't the whole objection supposed to turn the viewer on. And this is like the most unsexy fucking I've ever seen. Like I said, the guy has genital warts and you're seeing it up close in person. God. It's like, they're like laying on this, like the shittiest beach you've ever seen. Like you might step on a hypodermic needle on this fucking beach. That's another thing. All these beaches he filmed at, they're not beaches. They look like a shitty lake. There's no current. Um, and it's for all of his movies, especially Deep Blood is the most guilty of this. I don't know what yeah. beach they're on. It looks like they're, you know, on a riverbank somewhere. And this is no different. I'm sure he filmed all these movies in the same location for the most part. Um <laughs> It's bad. It's really bad. And like I said, I don't suggest anybody checking it out because I think Code Red may have released it a few years back. Uh, but as far it as finding like it on YouTube, that, yeah. as far as finding it on YouTube or anything, you're not going to find it. Uh, like I said, it's on some really sketchy porno sites that uh, you know, I couldn't find. You're it. rolling. Like, you're I'll... rolling. You're rolling the dice when you visit those kind of places. Yeah, like I just tried, like because I knew I, it's, this is not going to be on Tubi or like Amazon or anything. So I just tried to find it, but couldn't like really find it anywhere. So I feel like Apparently, it's not. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, I feel like it's not something I ever want to watch anyway. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like it's, yeah. Apparently the title was a swipe at Cannibal Holocaust. And I'm like, boy, you showed them. You showed, <laughs> yeah, you showed yeah. Rogero Diodato. Diodato really like, yeah, shivers at yeah. this film, I feel like. Yeah, it's a piece of shit. The real question is, do I think it's the worst of all the movies, I, I, I really, once we get into uh, Deep Blood and uh, and uh, Killing Birds, I think we can have a discussion as to which is the worst of all of these. I'm not entirely sure, really. But, yeah. Uh, so this is a good time to bring up, too, that we didn't talk about any of these films, but D'Amato made, like, a ton of those Emmanuel films and, like, a lot of softcore right. and hardcore porn. Uh, I hate all those films like that, so I knew I wasn't going to like any of those films. There's no sense even really going into those, but he I did I just, make a I lot just of don't those. get it. Like I don't, I, I don't know. It, it's like I don't know. I, I there, there's something I'm like where people and I'm not like a prude or anything, but I'm like I just don't get the mindset of just sitting down and seriously sitting there and watching porno like you're watching like a like a art house movie or or uh, and you're like taking notes and you're like <laughs> like what what is there to do? You know, <laughs> That's right. all these people are dead now and you're watching them fuck on camera. I don't understand it either, especially not like the, well, the whole your boat. Yeah. the whole Emmanuel thing. I don't get it all. Uh, yeah, there's like a million of those movies, and I've never watched any of them. Yeah, the closest I ever got, I bought that uh, that uh, Summer Camp Girls from Vinegar Syndrome. Oh it's, yeah, I love the cover. I watched about 20 minutes of it. And I'm like, eh, it's, yeah, yeah, it I is mean, what it is. I feel like that that's Wes's favorite though. That's yeah. like right up there. And then that's another thing too. You get backfires because you get to see like all these, you know, seventies perm pubic hair and all these people and hairy asses, and it's like, it's, <laughs> I don't get it. So okay, but anyway, yeah. What was the next one? The I'm next sure it's got to be way better than this piece of shit. I think <laughs> it is actually. Holocaust. I think it is yeah. better than this. So before we get into this, let's see what anybody said about porn holocaust. That's amazing how many <laughs> yeah. people. I'm sure know it this is a tie. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Rob says that he actually owns Porno Holocaust from Code Red. He's got the Code Red Blu-ray, which Jesus Christ. Ryan Do says, "Do yourself a favor and set it on fire." Ryan says, "Sounds like something Steve would like." Yeah, I guarantee Steve probably has. It. Yeah, probably so. Max says, uh, Emmanuel and the Cannibals, aka Trapped in the Kill, is marginally better sexploitation horror of this porn of all for laughs alone. Emmanuel America is the most shocking. I'm good. I'm, I'm gonna fine. take your word on it. Yep. All of this, <laughs> like all this talk about uh, porno and genital warts. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because that's the one thing I didn't remember, but I'm like, good God almighty. Like Jim Ross. Good God almighty. Good God. He's broken him half. Uses the same broken out warts. <laughs> Plot and erotic nights of the living dead. Plus the zombies look the exact same in the guy in porno, but at least a lady opens a wine bottle with her clam. Well, there you go. <laughs> That's a sight to behold. 
yeah, we all know that if you want sexy vintage films, you want bat pussy. Come on. Bat pussy. That's where it's at. So 1981, they basically made a sequel to The Grim Reaper, which was mm. absurd. And although it's a sequel, like they wanted it to be a, a straight sequel. I, from what I understand, like um, George Eastman, who's the main character, huge six foot nine dude in here uh, that kills everybody basically like changed around the plot some so it's not really anything like the grim reaper like he doesn't have candle wax head or anything he's just a regular looking guy basically it's a halloween ripoff um mm -hmm. this but the i guess the gimmick in this one is and i don't know which one came first this or silent rage but they have the same gimmick he's like a biogenetically engineered slasher guy that can't be killed because he's got like he can regenerate so he gets loose from this medical laboratory, enters into this small town and goes on a killing spree. And that's the basic plot of the film. Now, the one of the really cool things about this movie, and I don't know what the fuck kind of medical device this is, but I've never seen anything like this before. So he he's going around this killing spree and, and he ends up at this one family's house who has like a child. I can't tell if it's a boy or a girl. I think it's a girl dressed exactly like Annie. No shit in the same exact getup as Annie from the no films, shit. and one of the most annoying characters. Whoever did like the the ADR work should be smacked. But also has a sister who is strapped to this bed, and I don't know how to explain it, but it looks like she's got a jock strap around her chin that goes to the back of the bed and like is tied around the bed, so she can't move. What the she's fuck? Like, She's laying flat and there's like a jock strap around her chin that's like locked into this bed. I don't know for what. I don't know what like the I guarantee I you that's not a re, that's not a real medical tool. That's just whatever they had on set to to make it work. Like you said, and a jock strap or something. Yeah, I'm like because like the only reason for that is to set up tension for when this guy breaks into the house and she can't get like free from this jock strap thing that's like trapped her in this bed. So I don't know if she had like a broken neck or I don't know what it is, but it's something to just like keep her lying in this bed. So old boy kind of like comes in and, and Michael Myers, like a bunch of, but here's the thing about this movie though. It's probably in terms of like slasher films, even if you look at like city of the living dead, like there's a scene in it where, you know, the drill scene in city of the living dead, there's of like, course there's a much more graphic scene that involves a, like a, a skill saw in this film that I think tops the city of living dead kill really where he just runs a guy's head like this part first into like a skill saw Ooh. and kind of like splits it like right down the middle. And then there's another scene. And I don't know what Joe D'Amato's fucking deal is, but he really loves to like make people suffer and drag out these fucking kill scenes because so he breaks into this house and he grabs like the the mother sister character. I don't know which one she is. Like it's hard to determine in these movies. Yeah, they, and, they like, all kind of blend in. Yeah, uh, he shoves her head in an oven, turns it on, and this goes on for like ten minutes of her like slowly they cut back and forth, and then she slowly her head is like uh, melting. Oh shit! <laughs> to the point where like at the end of it, she's got like she looks like Jason in, in Friday Thirteenth One. She's got like a couple patches of hair. And like her whole face is like grayed and just like, <laughs> just like <laughs> Jesus. but that's not even the best part because yeah. like, then he goes after the sister and the little kid, but that chick's still alive. And she like pops up with her head all like Jason out and starts like fucking stabbing him, <laughs> trying to kill him. It's just, it's really, really insanely violent. And it's not that bad. Like in the, in the movie. Yes, it's on Tuesday. I'm, I'm going to have to check this one out. I just, I didn't have uh, enough time and I for, totally forgot this on a list, but I now I want to see it just because of those scenes alone. I mean, that's some like creative shit though. Like the, I'm all in with the, uh, the, the, the head melting. It, I, I, it's, it's, head melting. it's really uncomfortable to watch because like, you know, everybody can imagine what it would be like to like, just get, you know, set on fire or like you've all been burned and you can imagine. And then he's just holding her in there and she is like fighting the entire time. That's mm. what makes it so uncomfortable. Like, because like, it's like a five minute scene, maybe five to 10 minute scene of her just like fighting, trying to get away while her just gets progressively like more burnt. 
That's why, man. I need, uh, it's, it's brutal and badass. Yeah, it is brutal and badass. And then you know the neck jockstrap woman finally like gets out of her jockstrap and goes up against him and. Oh. It's not bad. It's you I mean, know. It, it sounds based off your description. It sounds a whole hell of a lot better than what's to come. Um, it so is. Check this one out. It is Which, like this, this came out in eighty one. So this came out still when he was uh, around the same time as pretty much the last two movies. They all took place within a year or two apart from each other. Yeah, so. like anything notable he did seems to have came out like in this seventy nine through eighty two. Yeah. Time this frame. Was, this was his dark edge lord. Fucking yeah. face. This is like him, you know, getting brutal and uh badass. yeah, I'm gonna check this one out. Yeah, brutal and badass. No, I really do recommend like if you like, you know, Italian splatter kind of films, if you like the scene in City of the Dead <laughs> where the guy gets it's basically a 90 minute version of that. That's what right. absurd is. So, so yeah, kids, children in peril, people being dismembered, blood, guts. There you go. That's hilarity absurd. ensues. Hilarity, four, yes. Four stars. Um, but what would be? Let's see. What would be next? So I guess before we get to the one that's like quite yeah. possibly the worst film ever made, committed to film. Uh, next, it's the second be, worst film committed. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, zombie this, five. Killing birds, which I can't fucking believe is a title of anything. Zombie Five Killing Birds. Well, the title's a lie because there's no birds that are killing. Did you notice that? No birds. I did. Yeah, them. and I'm trying birds. to figure out like what do you like, where do you think the title of this movie came from? Was this like? Well, the other alternate title was Raptor. Which what the fuck does that even mean? I don't know. But zombie. I think uh, to see where the zombie franchise, franchise, if you will. Started with Dawn of the Dead technically and ended with Killing Birds. Unless there's a part six that I don't know about. There you probably know, fucking Italian. is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like we don't even know. Right. So, um, it, where do we even start with it? I I can't. This one's a hard one for me because there's moments in this that are genuinely so bad it's good moments that you yeah. get from a genuine so bad it's good mo- movie where you're just like, oh come on. But then there's also long periods of nothing that kind of really bog it down so like i don't know i guess you can go go through the the plot because the plot just on itself is fucking hilarious and ridiculous the plot is um basically the plot of every single film we've talked about (laughs) so far so it's a group it's a group of college kids that kind of all get together and they're going into the woods uh, this isolated location. I guess maybe this is where the title comes from because they're going into the woods to study birds, right? Like that's Which, the fucking. I don't. I mean, point. What bird? What, what bird specifically were they studying? Do you even know? There was like a specific bird. There was. Before, which I. It takes place in a, uh, the deep swamps in Louisiana yeah, around yeah. New Orleans. Which there's a guy in this movie. I think he's like the leader of the student, and it's so fucking distracting because I'm like. This just had to be some guy they picked up off the street because his accent is a thousand percent from you know where I live. I live in the area. I live in the in the southern Louisiana, New Orleans area, and I'm like, it was so distracting because like he's talking, but he's like, first of all, not a good actor, and it just just seems like they just picked some guy up maybe for like to a local audition, and he's like, all these other everybody else in the cast are acting like you would expect to like we have to go to the house and, and, and find the birds and talk to this guy with these, with the, the messed up eyes. And then you have this one guy, it's like, yeah, so we're down to Bayou over there and we got to go, you know, do our work. And he just like doing his norm. Like just, it's so <laughs> jarring. Cause it's like, what the fuck? Um, the plot makes absolute, they're looking for I've never heard of this bird in my life that they're looking for. In the I'm gonna, hold on. I'm I'll like, try to look up the bird real quick. If, it, if anybody it, like mentions it. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck it is. It, it, did they try to act? It's like an bird? extinct species of woodpecker. Well, yeah, we have those down here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah wood, extinct Woodpe- species woodpecker. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. almost well extinct look- species it, of woodpecker. Yeah, okay, but like, <laughs> so to to back up, it starts off with this guy coming back from the army, 
and it's every i guess it's every man's nightmare he walks in on his wife or girlfriend or his significant other cheating on him having sex with another man so he goes you know what i'll show you and he fucking murders her murders uh-huh. the that's guy good. that's every what time you do you know movies. right yep. hell yeah dude you gotta you know you take gotta take care of the trash right and unlucky for him, these just these two random people with a baby show up. They're like la di da di da, just to his house as he's doing this. The worst timing in the world. They just murder your lover, uh, your wife and her lover, and then just these two people show up, which they never establish any kind of relation to the guy. They just kind of pull up and they're like, hey, how you doing? So he has to kill them now. And unlucky for him, the big fat guy that shows up just so happens to have a gun in his car and starts shooting back. So you have like this little mini shootout scene. So the movie comes in hot. He kills them. He's killed four people now. And just when you think everything is, uh-oh. Oh, shit. You turned into a creepy Kentuckian for a second. Hold on. I think my thing came loose. Ah, oh, god damn it. Now I'm on, the wrong, I'm on the wrong webcam now, though. Hold on. Yeah, like static quality. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like Here. a Joe D'Amato movie now. It does. Here we go. <laughs> there we go. So he just got done killing four people. And as he's about to leave, they have this whole collection of birds, like in like their little patio area. They have a shitload of these birds. And this hawk, it looks like a hawk, right? I think it's a this, hawk. Yeah. Yeah, this hawk just got, you know, he let all this shit. This, this, this hawk has seen enough, and he's like, "Well, guess what, motherfucker? I'm coming. And I'm ripping your fucking eyeballs out." <laughs> he rips out. his eyes out. I was like, and he rips his eyes out, like brutally too. It, it actually yeah. looked pretty good. It's like, and um, and then we cut to present time. And what? By the way, just as a side note to this too, like, what was the Italians' obsession with like eyes and fucking? Yeah, yeah. They like they like the eye gore, full Because I just remember too, in at the end of Absurd, the chick who's in the bed with the jock strap is always like drawing with these, like this protractor thing, you know, they kind of had like two pencils that come out like that, that you can like draw circles with and shit. Yeah. 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 So she, that's how she fucking wins. Basically. She jabs that into his fucking eyes when she, when he comes like to get her. So there's something with Italians, like just eye mutilation thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They, they, they really, they really went hardcore on that uh, pretty much across the board. Yeah, but uh, this one they got creative. They're like, no, we're uh, it's not gonna be pushed into a spike. Noah Zombie's not gonna pull it out. We're gonna have a fucking hawk come mm-hmm. and rip it out. You know, tear your fucking eyeballs out. Yeah, slowly. it looks like. Yeah, it'd be like. Uh, yeah, it, it it was it was pretty nasty. Um, but then it cuts to present day, and these college students that are looking for this rare woodpecker end up meeting the guy that we've seen that murdered his, his wife and her lover and all that. And uh, it's the, some of the goofiest fucking makeup effects. His eyes are looking at like through two different directions. I know. It, it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like looking in six different directions at once. And he's what like, is, what is that Ab Sandler movie where the guy's eyes are all like, like that? Like, Oh, is it big daddy? Is, yeah. Is it big daddy? Where Steve Buscemi? Buscemi? Yeah, yeah. Like that's yeah. what it reminds you of. Yeah. yeah. Except uh. it was, except, Instead of being his real eyes, like Steve Buscemi and Big Daddy, imagine that, but it's glued in like one yeah, eye right like, here, the other eyes right here, like two different spots. And he's just like kind of staring off into space as he's talking because that's, I guess, blind person acting. For the, that's that's, that's how you do it. Yeah. That was the direction Joe D'Amato gave him. You're blind. So you, every time you talk, you got to just be like wandering around. Like, if there's one thing I've learned from all these films, it's like you have to have a blind person at some point in all these Italian films. Another blind person. Holy shit. Yeah. I, I didn't even realize. Yeah. Yep. So you can take over for the plot because uh, at there is no. With, that's what I was about to say. Once <laughs> they meet up with the blind guy, I have no idea what's going on. They're wandering around the swamps. They yeah. have this house location. They have the swamps. They just wander around, and then zombies show up. Yes, and by the way, that can we hints, talk about hints, the look of the zombies? Zombie five. Yeah. What look? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what look? They're fucking silhouettes. Some of them, some of the stupidest shit it's of all stupid. time. It's a poor ver- it's a poor man's version oh. of the beyond. Like the zombies that Fulci didn't want at the end of the beyond, how he kind of yes. you know that yeah. He compromised, so he did it in a way to where they looked more ghoulish and it was a little bit more artistic because he really didn't want zombies in it to begin with. 
So it, it kind of gives it a distinct look at the end of what's going on with the smoke and the silhouettes. But that is done throughout this whole movie in the shittiest way possible to where you don't even get a hint at what they kind of look like. They're like, they're just, they just, would, it's like a fog machine in the background and it just darkness. I'm know. curious though, man, because something had to happen with this movie. Like, what the hell is the story behind this movie? Did you watch any of the special features to no, figure out, like, no. what the fuck? Like, I need, I, what were they going for? Did, I think, did Claudio Fergasso work on this one as well? Yeah. I know he did the four. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that explains it. Because, yeah. like, that, this, I don't know. It, do you get the vibe that it felt like it started off as one thing when they originally yes. wrote, and then it just somehow along the way it just went to this totally different direction? Because, but I get like, the same. I got the same vibe with uh, Zombie Three as I did with that too. Like it started out like yeah. being one thing, and then completely like disintegrates. But that movie was also made by two people, which was right, Fulci right. and then you know Bruno Mattei. Bruno but Mattei. like, yeah. So, so yeah, yeah. You kind of get the Zombie Three. It's kind of like. It's two wildly different movies because it's you know one's done by Fulci and one's done by Bruno Mattei, two geniuses in very different respects. Yes, but yeah. uh, but um, this, which by the way, I mean, not to shit on Joe D'Amato too much, but I mean Bruno Mattei, as far as bad movies, blows him out of the water because it's that, it's the opposite. They, Bruno Mattei has stuff happening that's hilarious unintentionally every minute in a movie, whereas it's yeah. the opposite with Joe D'Amato. It's just people wandering around wondering, you know, what are we doing? I, and I, here's the thing I feel like. I feel like that Joe D'Amato's movies weren't like – they weren't good, but they were good they were good enough to where they're just boring. If that right. makes any sense, like they're not yeah. so bad that like, there's so there's like so many bad things that happen in them that you can point to and be like, Oh, that was hilarious. Like this scene, that scene, they're not yeah. that bad, but they're, they're just competent enough to be really extremely boring. And like, that's a bad spot to be at really. If you're a director, this is the closest one I'd say he has to a, so bad. It's good. Like if you, if you have a bunch of people over and you want to watch like a bad movie night, of anything in his catalog, this is probably the one because there's little moments here and there. Spe- everything involving the blind guy in this movie to me is just fucking hilarious. There's a scene where this dude is running and hiding from the blind guy. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. He's fucking blind. What is he gonna do? Hit you with his cane? Like you got a whole you got a whole sight advantage, and he's hiding behind corridors and doors and shit. And he's like, it's like, dude, just just make a run for it. He's not going to chase you down. He has no idea where the fuck he's going. No, no, he's not like and, the blind guy from don't breathe or anything. This shit's not. No, him. Absolutely not. He's the total opposite. <laughs> and like the, everything involving him, he's it's all, that's what I'm talking about, man. It's like the blind guy, they set up in the beginning of the movie with this ridiculous fucking scene, which is probably the highlight and him getting his eyeballs ripped out. And then after that, he's kind of just there. He doesn't do anything. You don't even get a payoff of seeing the zombies kill him. Like it's implied. You can hear him screaming, but you don't yeah. even get that. It's like, so was this two different movies that they had that they were, I just feel like, like that was it. I feel like I want to like, go back now because I've, you know, I've got that vinegar syndrome version too, and watch like what the fuck happened to this movie. Right. Because it has to be plot. something like that. Yeah. Because yeah. none of it makes any sense. Like the plot changes and stuff don't make any sense. Right. And the fact that there's really not any zombies in this movie doesn't make any sense either. Like the zombies are kind of more like implied in the movie than they are actually fucking shown. So just to not confuse anybody, you find out that the zombies are the souls of the people that the blind guy murdered and they want their revenge, even though they're killing these innocent college students looking for fucking woodpeckers. And the guy only lives a stone's throw away. So they could literally just, you know, hover their ass over to his house and kill him at any minute. But they decide for, you know, the majority in the movie to fuck around with these college kids, which makes no sense. Uh, I mean, there's a few good scenes. Like there's one where they pull the girl's head out and, and her, like her neck, the skin, like layers of skin start peeling off. That was pretty good. Yeah, it was but the, right. mov- the movie's a mess though. It, it, it's, it's just a mess. Um, anything involving the blind guy is hilarious, but other than that, I mean, you know what though, you know what? I'm going to tell you the, the honest truth. As bad as this movie is, like yeah. I actually enjoyed this movie uh, a lot more than I enjoyed the the fucking last film that we're going to talk about. Though. Oh, oh, no, no, without a doubt. Like if we're comparing <laughs> the two, if we're comparing the two, this is like 
fucking Shawshank Redemption right here. Like, let's just be honest. Because at <laughs> least there's there's this movie gives you little bits and pieces to grab onto and be like, all yeah. right, yeah, that was fun. Okay. They're few and far between, but at least it has that. You know, at least it has a scene where a guy is hiding from a blind man, you know, or a scene where a, a bird rips out somebody's eyeballs, you know. Um, I don't know. It's, it's, I'm going to tell you, though, there are no redeeming qualities in this next film, though. Well, uh, should we? Well, should there we, is actually. There's, there's, there's one. But should we yeah. go to the chat before we, uh, oh, yeah, 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 just to give us because I need like I need to hype prepare myself for this fucking movie. Because <laughs> it, it, <laughs> okay, uh, Jackson Jack says killing rats with wings. Uh, maybe the term killing birds means like a pretty lady that kills people. Were there any of those? Not killing people, no, yeah. Uh, Wes says zombie five bird murder is a better name. Yeah, that's true. Bird murder could, he says, uh, Jackson Jack says, bird murder almost sounds like it could be a character name in the zombie apocalypse. Uh, yeah. Max. Even his non-sexploitation films, he found a way to get a pecker in there. Oh, that's, that is cheap. Ah, uh, yeah. uh, you see what he did there? Uh, uh Funny guy. Jack Frost wants us to know that uh, birds are dinosaurs. And then he goes on a long rant about how they didn't become extinct. I don't know what that has to do with anything. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> instead of the beyond, this movie was the barely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, man, towards the end when you see the zombies, it's so obvious that they were like, they just looked at the beyond and was like, let's try to do that. But on like a way less money and way less, you know, artistic vision yes yeah that's you know and a lot of these movies are kind of that too they're just yeah. rip-offs with far less money or kind of like you know any kind of talent i wish Speaking, we could have got to see that scene of the beyond like he fulci intended where it was like oh me too he's yeah. ghoulish blank like mannequin because it was like that's a pretty cool fucking idea and like I don't know. A lot of people just to go on a tangent real quick. Consider the Beyond a zombie movie. I really don't. It's like, it's like this. We. I, it's not really a zombie movie. There's zombies in it at the end. But like, yeah, but it's not. You're right. The focus of like, it is not really zombies. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a kind of like this weird existential fucking David Lynch type of splatter fest. You know. Very if very. David, if David if David Lynch met Fulci, that's the outcome would be. That would be it. Yeah. 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 So, are you ready for this fucking nonsense? I'm honestly not, but let's go. You know what? The reason we're a week late on this is because it's my fault. We were supposed to do it last <laughs> week, but in the middle of deep blood, I was born. My TV must have been born and committed suicide on itself because about at the 35-minute mark, it just went. A Samsung TV that was three years old just ran out of warranty. My luck. And uh, oh, I, had to buy a, I had to buy a new one. So I'm like, all right, I'll buy a new one from Target. The one from Target comes in. It looks like it got smashed with a baseball bat after I mounted it to my wall. So I got the second TV in. And what was the first movie I had to christen the brand new TV? <laughs> no. No. Yes. God damn, man. That's depressing in and of itself. That's, that is super I, depressing. To give you like a backstory, I have n I've never seen this movie up until Neither this point I. and the only context i knew from this movie is was that cruel jaws stole like a lot of scenes from this movie that's the only way i'd ever heard of this movie and made it better yes far yeah. far better than this but this not is, even close yeah this is 1989's deep blood which is definitely a jaws ripoff and probably one of the worst like killer shark films I have ever seen non ironically. I'm not like saying like, it's not no. bad. It's good. It's not anything like that. It's just, it's fucking, fucking horrible. Awful. Yeah. Yeah. So look, the there, there's two movies that come to mind whenever dead pit, you and uh, CK bring up movies that are just like watching paint dry. It's usually yes. error on tour. Yep. That's and, one of them. And scream 1981. Yep. This is right there with it. Like this, yeah, I've I've never seen Terror on Tour, but I've seen Scream 1981, and this this is holy fuck, man. There are large portions of this film where nothing happens. Like it's just dudes going out and like having beers, and or dudes like going fishing, or like dudes like 
just nothing <laughs> is going dudes on. Being dudes. Yeah, dudes, dudes being, being dudes. dudes. Yeah. It's so like the last 30 minutes of this movie is just this shitty aqua footage of like basically the end all the footage of the end of cruel jaws is the ending of this movie except it's 35 fucking minutes long it's, dude it's, it's like awful. it takes forever it takes so you're just sit there watching like what's supposed to be the climax in a movie just shots of scuba diving for like 20 minutes yes and like there's no by the way there's not a, and i and i went through this just to make sure there's not a goddamn scene in this movie where a shark actually attacks somebody and you no. see anything like that there's like a hundred scenes of just like real shark footage. And then there's scenes of like people like being pulled underwater and like paint looking blood or you never. Blood. Yeah. You never see a shark come in contact with somebody else or even really be near anybody else so, in this movie. Her, the woman that gets killed first, they tried to do the thing like in jaws when the Kittner boy gets eaten off the raft. Yeah. Except there's no sign of struggle. I mean, I guess there, there's no screaming. There's no nothing to be like, holy shit. They're getting, it just cuts to this woman. This is the water. Her legs are up here, and she's just shaking her legs like like gyrating as this yep. orange paint. It, it looks like or, it looks like red mud, like that red clay mud if you threw it in the water. It doesn't look like blood at all. It's some of the worst then, shit ever, yeah. It's some of the worst shit ever. I think the best thing about this movie, and there's nothing good about it, but if there's one thing that I can say is the standout of this movie – is the fucking opening credit sequence. I was getting ready to say. So bizarre. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to set this the, up. Explain the opening credit sequence. I'm going to set this up because I was watching it and I was like, this is fucking butt-ass insane. So, in a funny way, though, this yeah. is the only redeeming quality of this movie. It's the only the entertaining way. thing about this movie is the first two minutes. The, <laughs> the opening of this movie is this group of kids. I would say they're probably eight to 10 years old sitting around this campfire roasting fucking hot dogs and just the way that they're doing it you can tell that like the director like joe damato was like off camera just being like smile like you know smile like you like each yeah. other so they're just like <laughs> yeah the creepiest these fucking, fucking smile. raw hot dogs yeah and they're the just hot like, dogs aren't even cooked they go there's like a pan shot from the hot dog to these creepy ass kids just like you know smiling back and forth at each other and yeah. it's just it looks so unnatural and so terrifying. And as then opening credits of of a shark yeah, movie. Of a shark movie. And, and as the soap opera music is playing in the background, and it's uh you think it you think you're watching like a satire or something, because it's it's like, come on, but no. There's, there's one shot, dude. I don't know if you remember this, where the but kid like tries to take tries to take a bite of the hot dog and he's like, it's like it must be awful because he's just yeah. like mm. Well, it was raw, dude. It, it, yeah. they, I don't think they were hovering it over the fire. I think they headed it like away from the fire because they cut to the hot. They cut to the hot dog a few times on the stick, and it's just yeah. barely any cooked. And they're like eating it, like trying so not you to know, tag on this. He fucking, had to be like, "Eat the hot dog, eat the fucking hot dog." And the kid was like, "No, I don't want to eat the hot dog." He's like, eat it. That was the I, shot that you got. But like, yeah. like this is like. You would think just by this open, if you knew nothing else about the movie, just based off this opening credits, that you were getting your leg pulled. Like this was like a troll or something. Like like some well, Adult Swim, some Tom Green type shit. Where you're like, what the fuck? It, because it has not. Does it have any bearing on a plot? No. We well, it does. It, yes, it does because of what happens next. Okay. Because and this, you thought that was like fucking ridiculous. Well, the next thing that happens is a Native American guy walks up. Oh, out of God. nowhere and he's like hey guys like i i've got this stick this which is a it's a fucking stick that's got all these engravings in it and he's like this uh this stick will help you one day to find out about you know the great evil that comes from the seas or something like that and he's <laughs> like you got and they bury this fucking stick in the beach so all these kids are the kids that would later grow up to be like the okay. main people in the it, the, that are going around fishing and drinking beer and then the native american dude is basically like you know you'll need this one day which they fucking don't ever need no. it by the way they no, dig they it up of up. course but it like it has no bearing on them being able to do anything with the shark or anything yeah, like what that. are you gonna do with a stick a magic stick against a shark so uh just that opening scene that's that probably the only like the only like decent no, scene in this whole movie. Because after this, 
what we've been complaining about this whole show about the pacing and the slog of all those movies. This is the guiltiest fucking party because oh, this yeah. is it's borderline unwatchable. Like it is. I fast forwarded a lot in this fucking movie. If I'm being honest, like I just couldn't. Mu- the music is fucking awful, and you hear the music the whole time because there's not much going on over everything. It's like the shittiest, like kind of. I don't, I don't it's 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 bad so like isn't fuck like so the, the dad like there's like there's like a isn't or like a Hatfield and McCoy situation going on between the parents or I I, I really don't know because these people just come and go and it's like that's one person's dad like the boy has a dad that's a drunk one of them's a drunk that just kind of talks shit to his son Right, or... I'm trying to remember exactly what the plot of this fucking movie is, to be honest. Because, so after you get past Native American guy and you fast forward to like them, like being in like they're basically in high school or college or something like that. I can't remember. Yeah, they're like early college, bro. Yeah, and they show back up at the place, and then like one of the friends gets killed by the fucking shark. That's the one thing that I remember. Mm, yeah. And then the the one kid is like he sees it. And he goes to the, it's like Jaws. So he goes to the sheriff and he's like, uh, you know, I saw the friend get murdered or whatever. And the guy's like, do you have any witnesses? <laughs> you mean besides me? And he's like, no. And he just like storms off. So the sheriff doesn't believe him. Oh, and- dude. You know what I just remembered? There's out of the fucking blue in this movie. There's a narration that just lasts one scene. And it sounds like a fucking Christmas story. It's like the the Christmas story narrator, just out of the blue. Do you do you remember this? Like, no, I probably it's just, just from one scene where it's like it's like a narration explaining what's going on. And it sounds like the, the guy from a Christmas story being like, "Oh boy, there's a shark attack." I was like, it just <laughs> it it does not fit whatsoever, and it just comes and goes. Um, oh God, I, I you know what I I do I was. I did really like the mid eighties, mid to late eighties Mustang that the bullies were driving. Oh yeah. That was pretty yeah. cool. But uh yeah, there's bullies in this movie. And there's bullies, yep. They just harass the, these guys are all in their twenties, like early twenties, right? And I know yep. some people could be dicks or whatnot, but the the time and place <laughs> of like you and your pals riding around fucking with other guys like fifties greasers at that point in your life, I don't care what decade it is. If it was the late eighties now, whatever that point in your life, you're not worried about going around fucking harassing people anymore, but they act like they're high school bullies when they're like clearly established to be in college already. Yeah. They have girlfriends and whatnot. And then you have this group that's just like riding around in a black Mustang being like, yeah, bitch, what's going on? Like just, Giving yeah. shit to our main like characters. every every other like you know Johnny Lawrence style boy that you can imagine right. like they're just fucking like driving around you know and they meet him at the bar and they talk shit to him and they rough one of the guys up and it's just that they they're all throughout the entire movie doing this by the way yeah I like the up one until scene the very the end bar. right yeah, yeah. The yeah. One, one scene when they're in the bar talking shit and the bartender's like hey I think you need to go <laughs> like <laughs> stick it up. <laughs> Yeah. so unnecessary and it's just it's so it's so they, everything's so half-assed it's like you never they, get a scene where they really do anything egregious so it's just kind of like no but i just drive around being like hey you fucking uh, again with the mean spiritness of all of his movies there's just these characters that show up that just exist to just put down other people and they put down the bar <laughs> too they're like you fucking piece of shit like or yeah. whatever like you old he's fucking like, man he's like i'm just trying to run a bar here and they're like ah fuck you and like yeah, it's the just their whole bar and shit. Yeah. yeah but like and they only had access to one very shitty raggedy dock throughout this whole movie that oh, it's like yeah. a set piece in this movie they go back to it like four or five times and it's like the shittiest dock you would if you walked on it you would probably fall through a like a wooden board of the whole thing and they go at least three or four different times. Anytime there's a shark scene involved, which, by the way, you notice we've talked about everything but the shark. So there's far. no sharks in this there's movie. No shark. Like there's there's, none. there's not like an identifiable like shark. There's just like stock footage of different like great whites and things like that from like National Geographic. That's the only thing that's in this movie. And then it looks like that's not true because it looks like that maybe like they had a bathtub and one of the. One of those yeah. little like rubber sharks that you got when you were a kid. And that's in here because like, was, there's a couple uh, of scenes like. Yeah, those uh, were a few of those scenes were used in Cruel Jaws. And uh, yeah. like that, when they're in the helicopter shooting at him, being like, nah, you bastard to a shark. Yes. But the, uh, oh, 
I don't want to keep going back to Cruel Jaws, but that's an example of a bad shark movie done right, where it's just like there's one hilarious thing after another. They had clearly had no idea what they were doing. The people involved thought they were making some killer shit and had this is just boring. There's there's nothing. There's nothing to talk about. Like I struggle to even think about it. It it base I don't even know the plot. Well, they there's try people that just show what it's like a coming of age movie more than a shark. Yeah, movie. they they try to make it like they try to make some tension in a lot of the scenes. Like there's one scene where once they figure out that it, it's a shark and like the sheriff actually believes them. Then they try to make it to where like uh, the dad and a couple of the kids go out and they go out like fishing for the shark. And then there's a couple of scenes where like <laughs> you and me go fishing for the, <laughs> the shark. Yeah. <laughs> there's a couple of scenes where they try to do that and they have the shark like come like right up behind the, the dad or whatever, but he gets away. It's like, but it's just pointless. It's, like there's so many pointless scenes like that in this movie. It just They're, boggles my mind that the same guy that has, you know, a fucking uh, crazy fucking dude eating an unborn child out of a stomach. When he, by the time he gets to a shark movie, there's really nothing. And there's nothing. No, it there's no go gore. Through. There's no nothing. like. No, there's it's, just a lot of paint, and you know, old stock footage of sharks. And then the end sequence, oh, geez, which goes on for like thirty fucking minutes, like you were saying, where they the 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 plan is basically like there's this shipwreck underneath them, and they decide like they're going to like trap the shark in this shipwreck and then put a bunch of like detonators like explosives around it, and then when the shark gets in there, blow the whole fucking thing up, which sounds like it would be awesome, but what it amounts to is like the end is like one of those rubber sharks <laughs> they have like like an aquarium like a twenty gallon aquarium and they blow that up. And that's exactly what it looks like. Well, it not only that, it takes about like 25 minutes to get to that point. You're just yes. like, you're just seeing like underwater footage, like scuba diving, like of them. Look, they're showing you every step of the way, them planting every detonator, turning it on, wiring it, putting yep. it next to one, taking a coffee break, <laughs> everything in between. Like, you're, you're just like, what the fuck? Like, that reminded me though, man, like their big fucking thing in this movie, their big like idea, their plan. And this cracked me up when I first saw it is they've got like a car battery <laughs> in the boat and like the wires to the car battery are like out in the ocean. And so they're trying to get the shark to like run off with it. And then the dude just like, hold on. And he's like trying to hit the positive and negative with the wires to the electric. Oh my the God. Shark. <laughs> That's the plan. Like they're trying to fucking use a car battery to, just like that, really yeah, he, didn't, he didn't think that through no but eventually that's how they detonate the charges with a, a literal car battery on the top of a fucking boat that's that's the end of the movie listen folks people out there i know there's a lot of people that watch dead pit and talk about bad movies and they want to seek them out so they can do yourself a favor. Do not watch this movie. It's there's no, there's, there's no, no reason. Watch the first two minutes, the opening credits, to get like a good laugh, and then turn it off after that because there's nothing. No, it, this is one of the most boring fucking movies, which is the worst sin a movie can be is boring, and this is boring as boring can get. Like it's, it's truly awful. It's just a whole bunch of nothing. There's no, there's nothing about this movie to recommend really. You could watch the first five minutes and then like get a laugh and then that could be it because there's nothing else going on. Yeah. But of these films that we've talked about tonight, like I could probably like recommend, I could recommend um, Beyond the Darkness. I don't know who the fuck I would recommend the Grim Reaper to. You're but right, no. I, yeah, if you're like a huge fan of, like gore and like Italian gore films and stuff, maybe. Um, I could recommend absurd. Um, what else is there? I don't think there's anything else I could recommend. No, I, th I didn't see absurd, but I can recommend. Well, I don't know if I can recommend this to people because I, I don't want to be looked at like I'm a fucking serial killer or something. But <laughs> of the movies I liked, Beyond the Darkness and The Grim Reaper, uh, I think Beyond the Darkness was by far his best of everything I've seen. I think it was definitely the least boring, the best paced, uh, had a lot of shit throughout sprinkled in uh grim reaper i thought was boring as hell and then i thought the last 30 minutes saved the movie and you know overall i like it just because it did pay off you know it's boring they could have he could have paced it better but there was a huge payoff uh everything else man who i i don't know 
What do you think is the worst of all of them? Because uh, I, I really definitely, do think it's, it's got to be deep blood. Yeah, right? it's definitely deep it's blood. Definitely. Like that's that's by far like the most just. It, you you can't make a shark film without like having an actual like shark or like shark attacks or anything like that that would actually make that worthwhile somehow or another. Or plot. Like, yeah, nothing, nothing yeah. about that movie. Like, it's it just had more in line to do with one of those shitty Hanna Barbera Scooby Doo ripoffs. Yeah. Like, so like imagine Jabber Jaws. <laughs> imagine if like you took the Grim Reaper, but at the end, like rather than all that crazy shit happening like they just fucking like went fishing or something like that would be the same they hung, thing they hung around the basement at a castle for 30 minutes showing <laughs> you shots of the darkness yeah. and then and then, and then set yeah. some detonators up and blew up the grim reaper and then that was the whole film like that would I be the, the same what do you think the movie's an hour 30 minutes hour and 40 minutes it, it, it is it's like hour, it's yeah three, it feels like it's three hours long it, it, is, it is oh my god watchable like it it's, really is it's garbage like Please save By the way, the time and do not watch it. Do, do Joe D'Amato, like I said early on, made like a hundred over like hundreds of films. I'm pretty sure most of them were hardcore pornography, but you know, a lot of them were sexploitation, uh, softcore porn, you know, genre film stuff like that. So there's some things on here, like he had like a apocalyptic film called in game that i didn't watch right. he had like a bunch of other stuff that i didn't watch so maybe 20, like 20 texas gladiators yeah maybe like yeah. somewhere in there he like hit his stride but like he of all the directors that i've done on this show he's the most like hit and miss so far like he didn't really like he had a sequence of movies that i feel like he he was pretty good at and then he just everything went to shit and he just really didn't recover there's no there's no spirit there really for most of these it's just kind of like you said maybe killing birds i'm interested to see zombie five what what happened there yeah because i think there's a little bit more to the story that maybe we don't know about because it does seem like just like a weird mess but i mean deep blood deep blood is such a and i kept messing up and saying deep red me too that's what i kept thinking yeah oh my god would i have rather watch deep red like jesus christ could you that's an actual movie that's an actual movie you know as opposed to whatever the fuck that was but i gotta say though in watching all these movies and all these guys though like you kind of start to learn that they all did have like a really unique distinctive mm. style like none of these guys are like the other guys like they're just not mm. like they all completely were different in their style as filmmakers and you know some of the early damato stuff that i saw like had he gone like another way with it or maybe gotten better, which he never really did. Like he could have been really good, but it just, it didn't happen. Like he has his own style that is very dark, very cynical, very just like perverse and mean spirited, like we were saying. And yeah. that's kind of the direction that he went. So if you're into that kind of thing, um, he went mean spirited yeah. though, but by the time you get to deep blood, it's like this, I don't even. It's sure the, what the, it's the other direct. They try to make it like a like a fucking a coming of age story. It's like Stand by Me, but with no plot or personality. Where it's like all these yeah, good friends. And yeah, it's it's like just, how did we get from eating unborn children to this? Like it's just the weirdest turn from where we started to where we ended up. As far as and by the way, in between all that was like a hundred hardcore pornos. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. don't know, like like yeah. Yeah, he's rotted his brain. Jack Frost says uh, that TV we <laughs> wished it had never been turned on. Oh my god, yeah. Uh, Jackson Jack says that he eats cold hot dogs all the time. Is there anything wrong with that? Um, yeah, that that's disturbing. Uh, Manic Exorcism. It's good to see you. He says he's been busy with a new job. I'm glad you're on here. Um, everybody though that hasn't checked out the first two of these, check them out. They've got pretty good responses on mm -hmm. there. Bruno Mattei and Liberto Bava and Joe D'Amato is a hard sell, man, because oh, yeah. Joe D'Amato is of all of these guys, probably like maybe the less known, um, more like just obscure of any of the guys that I'm going to talk about on this entire show for good reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For good reason. When I get to Umberto Lindsay, he might also be like mm. in that same vein, but D'Amato is, He's rare. He's a, he's a rare one. Tomato, tomato. So uh, I guess that's it. It was a great yeah. show. 
Yeah. Well, are you ever going to do a Cronenberg version of this type of show? Because I feel like he has a good diverse he does. biographies. I would ever I, do. If you ever do, I'm calling. I'm calling dibs on Crash right now. Oh Jesus Christ! Yeah, <laughs> watch that again. Like, um, yes, I would love to do that at some point. I've talked about doing that. Um, yeah. But. I don't. That's that. I like every single one of his films. Almost. Have you so seen that Crimes be, of the Future? No, I haven't seen that I li- one yet. I liked it. A lot of people shit on it, but like, it's not his I, best. But it's, you know, it's it's good. And no, it's not. It's it's a weird people. I think it, I don't know. It's like a '90s. What he was doing in the '90s, where he was kind of get. It was still horror, but it was like weird and experimental. Like yeah. Naked Lunch, Crash. That, that's what Naked Lunch Existence. Is yeah. yeah, so it's like, it's along that line, but it's like, it's a definitely an accessible movie. But if you're familiar with Cronenberg's filmography, you should, you know, it, it's not that big of a stretch of the imagination. He would do something that's a little weird like that. But it's definitely better than Maps to the Stars or whatever the fuck he did before that. That was, that was pretty but bad. is it better than Deep Blood, though? We may never well, know. anything's better than Deep Blood. I mean... <laughs> I've never seen a Serbian film, but I'm pretty sure it's better than Deep Blood. I'd say it is. Um, (laughs) A couple of different things on here, though. I actually almost would bet that this will happen, too. Max says, I bet we'll get like a 4K set for Deep Blood any day now from Vinegar Syndrome, probably. No, no, Severn, Severn, didn't Severn release it? Did they actually release Deep Blood? Yes, they may have. They released it. Fucking. That sounds, that sounds right, yeah. God, that movie's bad. Uh, I I'm not going to review the top ten Italian pornos. I just I feel like that's not the answer. Um, yeah. Jackson Jackson says the top ten crazy Italian movies. Mm. That would be that would be fucking tough. Yeah, because then you venture into the cannibal movies, and then all right, Solo number one, easy. And yeah. yeah, yeah. There we go. Grim Reaper would be <laughs> right <laughs> up there too. Uh. Um. But you were talking about Cronenberg. I've really started liking uh, Brandon Cronenberg stuff, though. The more yeah. of his shit that I start to watch, the more that I actually really like appreciate. I need that. to give Infinity Pool another chance. I just when I watched it, I wasn't really feeling it, and I kind of turned it off halfway. A through. A weird that, movie, man. Like that's that's very, right up it, there. Yeah, when she starts the scene where she starts jerking him off, and while he's pissing, I was just like, Yeah, <laughs> this is this is bizarre. <laughs> how do you do that? Yeah, how, like, how do you do? One. Wouldn't that that would fucking hurt, man? Jesus. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of biology that goes against that that we'll not talk about here. But I hope yeah. she washed her hands after for two different reasons. <laughs> Let's get a UTI yeah. and shit. Yeah. That. I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah. But anyway, uh, you like I said, the good thing about these Italian movies and all these directors, by the way, that I mentioned is you can see all this stuff for free if you just go over to Tubi. Yeah, because like almost all these guys' films are on Tubi. Shout out to uh, Tubi though, for real, because. Uh, they have a shitload of stuff. It's like it's literally the mom and pop video store of streaming services. It is they have yeah. all that shit that you would see. And one good thing about it too is it has autoplay. So if there's something you're watching, it'll play whatever similar right behind it. So like you know, you watch Return of the Living Dead, and then it'll be like, all right, Return of the Living Dead three is next. And yeah, so, so yeah, it, yeah. It's 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 really good with that. It could keep going. Like I fell asleep to Tubi and woke up with like some. I'm like, ah, oh, shit, you know maximum overdrives on you know it's really saved my ass on a lot of these shows too because like mm-hmm. where else are you going to find like all these directors filmographies and shit right. like they but, should just have an italian section on tubi because they have pretty much all of these fuckers that you're covering is all yeah of it's on tubi you know you could they do have an italian horror section by the way if you go into they the categories list okay. yeah you could just like yeah. look up italian horror. You know, so, I wonder before we go real quick, yeah. they have to make a shitload of money because didn't they have a Super I, Bowl commercial? They had yeah. a Super Bowl commercial, man. Like, so how are they making money? Just ads? Ad, like, I guess the ads. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's crazy to me because they have so many like titles on there that are like so many horror titles. I don't even know what other titles they got because I only use it for horror. But and then they'll have some mainstream titles on there, too, where it's like, oh, damn, like, you know, some you know, big movie, not, you know, brand new movies, but like movies of the last five years. It'd be like, okay, you know, I watched dread on there recently. Yeah, man. So have, I, I don't they know how they good. exist and do what they do, but God bless them for God bless. Doing. Tubi. Yeah. So CK would kill me if I didn't bring up though, that, uh, 
We are going to have the Horror Media Hall of Fame show on June 25th at 10 p.m. That's oh, where we yeah. will be discussing like what what uh, not films necessarily, but releases. what physical media releases. Yeah, we would put in the Horror Hall of Fame. So that's coming up in, on uh, the 25th at 10. I think that's the, uh, the only next show that we're doing. That was the first one. That was a fun show. I, I think did the Phantasm. I can't remember. Didn't the Phantasm Phantasm uh, Ball? Yeah, this ball get inducted. I remember that. Yeah, and maybe I think one of the Dawn of the I don't know. Maybe one. Yeah, of the one Dawn of the, of the Dead. Dawn of the Dead Ultimate Edition got. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that I look forward to that. That's good. So that's coming up, and then next Monday is Diodato. So next Monday, uh, I'm doing the the films of Rogero Diodato, which. I feel like will be less traumatic than this is. Well, I don't know. Maybe not traumatic, <laughs> but <laughs> maybe like at least you confident. won't be bored. You yeah. will not be bored. Put yeah. it that way. So I got to find Rizal Diodato's body count and try to watch that. And then uh, what's he got? Like slash and run uh, body count. Are you even going to talk know. about, I mean, are you even going to talk about like Cannibal Holocaust since that's been covered to death? Or are you going for his? You got to. You got to. You yeah. Got to at least talk about to. it. I mean, that's his legacy right there, right? What's the other one that he did though? That was like the uh, the the uh, with the, um what's the crew? Yeah, I can't think. House of it. at the end of the park. House at the that, yeah something. There's like a something million like house movies like that. House. Yeah, something like. Yeah. So yeah, did auto be a good one? Is yeah. body count on Tubi? Of course it is. Yeah. So that'll be great. Everything's on Tubi, man. But uh yeah, it was a fun show. I liked it, despite the movies being uh hit or, or mostly miss, mostly uh total strikeout. Uh, yeah, I do have to put over Grim Reaper and uh Beyond the Darkness because they uh they show me things I never saw in <laughs> 31 years of living. Maybe you didn't want to see, maybe you yeah. did want to see, maybe you're curious about, but didn't want to ask, you found them. Uh, now we know. But, yeah, it's always hilarious to have you on here, man. It's always great. All right. yeah. And I appreciate it. I appreciate everybody in the chat. So next uh, Monday at the same time, stop on by for Diodato. And then don't forget about the Horror Media Hall of Fame show on the 25th. And I'm sure like everybody else has got like a thousand different things that they're going to be doing. Uh, tons of shit. Carter, do you got anything going on before I get off here? No. Besides yeah. <laughs> just, just being a general yeah. like badass. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I just come in and then bounce. That's that's my style. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll if see. anybody wants me to talk about shitty movies with them, I'm always available. Hit me that, up. That will definitely happen soon, man. Yep. Uh so I will see you guys later and we will see you next week. Give us the thumbs up. Off you butts. Like, subscribe. And if you subscribe, here's something else you can do. Once you subscribe, you can click the bell notification, right? And it'll notify you anytime that Dead Pit puts up new shit. Or don't. I really don't give a <laughs> if you do. I want you to. I want you to. <laughs> I don't that's, care. Let's keep our community growing here on I, YouTube. I don't, I don't like it. I don't want you to do nothing. Listen, they need to do that, pal. No, don't you dare yeah. touch it. Thumbs up subscribe and click that bell there's all kinds of wonderful shirts over at shop.deadpit.com simply the best horror shirts on t public there are others but they all suck you can get some dead pit radio shirts you can get last south on the left the hills have eyes texas chainsaw oh wait you can't say texas chainsaw all kinds of shirts, folks. You're going to love them. Shop.deadpit.com Thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. Dead Pit on Patreon.com is the only place to check out a complete archive of the old Dead Pit radio shows all the way back from 2005 on, in addition to the midweek shows and fan commentaries exclusive podcasts and much more dead pits on patreon.com if you're interested tears started only one dollar